I'm surprised the dairy farmers of Canada will pay you to do this instead of the government. Uh, because the dairy see, farmers of Canada, we we fund those guys, yep. right? So they've got an interest. They're together with Ducks Unlimited as well, and so one of the things that they're really asking us to take a look at is there's all kinds of programs out there, and so why are they not being picked up? Uh, you know, but it was originally through the dairy farmers of, of uh, Canada. Okay. And huh. so that's that's where you replied back to yeah. us and said, hey, if you want to come out. Um, and then there's another one through Ag Corp. Okay. And we're gonna hopefully do an irrigation upgrade. That we're gonna change the hydrant spacings. Okay. We're gonna get a bigger machine that can spray wider, so you're doing less passes, you're doing less overlap, all that stuff. We're yeah. gonna try to get okay. this coming spring. Hopefully, they'll roll okay. out with a with a program. For how that. much um, How much less water do you think you're gonna end up using? Then? Well, we figured we're doing a 40% overlap right now. Because our hydrants are set up for an older wheel line, it yeah. used to be an older real wheel line. Yeah. So I think the spacings are, I believe it was 120 feet, yeah. and it should actually be 300. Okay. So that's where your overlap is huge, and your nutrient. Yeah. That'd, yeah, so be almost, that'd be almost double. Yeah, pretty much. Like you're you're over spraying quite a bit. Okay. So if and you're putting too much water out, then your fertilizers that you put in, it's kind of leaks through, right? Yeah. Absolutely. But it's called a free heater. Yeah. So what happens is, is this is like a, a cooling that cools your milk. Yeah. But those lines get cooking hot, just like you're cooling your car. Yeah. Yeah. So what what's in this tank through here? Okay. Is coils going around like this? Yeah. 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 And that, and the water that's sitting in the tank gets warm. So it actually heats up to 110 degrees. So this thing here, every second plate, there's cold water that comes through here, goes in, yeah. and as soon as this pump kicks in, the milk comes through here, yep. this thing kicks in, it triggers that electrical valve up there, yep. and then it runs cold water up and down these veins to cool the milk to about 18 to 17 degrees okay. from, you know, from a cow's... Um, yeah, if you live over 100. Well, Celsius wise is like 32 or 30 degrees, right? Okay, a little cool. Yeah. So, yeah, so it cools it almost in half. Yeah. Cows are actually warming up and giving yeah. us what we need to be cost efficient. Yeah. So that's another thing that we did. Yeah. We upgraded from electric. From electric to, to gas. Yeah. yeah, and it was a huge big bo uh, electrical boiler. It was 100 amps. So it took a heck of a lot of energy. Yeah. This is a variable drive unit. Okay. What it does is that we got a 20 horsepower pump. It'll start slowly and then it'll wind up to the speed. Okay. So that's that's running right now. Okay, yep. Right? And then there's another one in the parlor in the corner here. Yep. Because we upgraded okay. from that electrical one. <coughs> See that little small electrical one there? Yep. In the middle? Well, that didn't really do much. No, that's not good. Much at all. And so now that one kicked in, just kicked in now, right? So it's warm in here, right? You can actually milk yeah. in a t-shirt. Yeah. And to run those things is, is super cheap. Yeah. Oh yeah. That's that, like gas heat is inexpensive. Yeah. What we need to do next time is we're gonna want to upgrade these lights to LED. Yeah. And we're gonna hopefully get that grant. Yeah. For that. So. Okay. That's another thing we want to do. Buildings I've, I've done all up to LED, not only because of the energy, but at yeah. the same time because they actually light up. Because that big light, that big light, there's a bunch of big lights that take a lot of energy. Yeah. And we're going to do LEDs, LEDs and those. And yeah, hopefully we get that grant. Yeah, cool. My personal interest, I'm, I'm really looking at, at the, the outside environment. Yeah. But we've also got like a lot of the stuff you're doing in terms of the environmental farm plan yeah. is something that's significant as well yeah. because it is a different way of addressing environmental issues. Yeah. You know, less energy or if there's less spread of, of um, like excess fertilizer, excess yeah. inputs, things yeah. like that. Yeah. The the two ends of it, one is, is most that's definitely yeah. being much more efficient. Yeah. And like cutting back on the energy like you're doing is yeah. absolutely crucial. Yeah. Um, making sure that we're not wasting anything at the same time. Yeah. You know, like if, if we're wasting as we're we're producing, yeah. then we're not doing any health. Like, yeah. And then, like being creative with the way you're doing your feed, like you've got two crops going at yeah. the same time. Yeah. No, pups, I'm not going to reward well, you that, for that. So that if, you, if you're doing that, like if you research corn, 
growing side by side a soybean, yep. besides growing extra feed, yep. it's really, really good for your soil health because yep. the, the roots go, grow different. They do something different in the soils. Yep. Well, and, so that, and most of your, your beans and your legumes are, are um, they're nitrogen fixers. Yeah. Uh, providing nitrogen for the corn. Yeah. Um, I'm trying to remember what corn does. I don't know corn quite as well. But they work together. Like a, a traditional um, a traditional growing pattern, the indigenous peoples would grow with squash, beans, and corn all together. Yeah. Like they would plant in the same hill. Yeah. And so they, they work together yeah. in order to create a much healthier system yeah and so absolutely like that's a very important part of, of growing is to get everything together right? yeah so that it's it's going to work you know intercropping is fantastic at the same time putting the, the the beans and the alfalfa down you're going to um it not only improves the the nutrient but it improves soil structure yeah want to get away from fooling around in the creek yep because it's a fish bearing creek yep and to put this in and out every time you have to disturb the creek to get sure. it in and out. You're in there and stuff. Yep. So we want a, another, through the Egg Corp program, I think there's a program, hopefully that'll come out, that'll allow you to put a more of a permanent kind of, what do you call it? I know what you're talking about. I can't come up with the word for it, but the collecting basin yeah, of some sort. Yeah, so we can get away with like fooling around in the creek. So I'll, like, I can show you, since you're here anyway, I can show you. Yeah. Probably, it's still flowing, but it's probably flowing underneath the ice now. Yeah. But this is the, the source here. Okay. And we put our intake like right in that <clears throat> yeah. deeper spot. And then we, the intake line is, you see the pump and it runs kind of up to that tree. It's kind of just sitting there now. Yeah, I can kind of see it. Yeah, it's the... like a, a line. So that thing will swing out. It's like a flex kind of hose. Yep. And it just drops right into there. But what we want to do is we want to put a, a screen basin kind of in, in the bed of the creek. Yep. Let it sit there. And then pipe it into a settling pit or box right on the other side of the pump house there. Yep. So that's the plan eventually. Yeah. Yeah. And then you don't have to fool around <clears throat> with that. In the summertime, I was fooling around with my GoPro because I just bought it and it's waterproof, <laughs> right? So I actually took it down into the water, yeah. right where the intake was going, and you can actually see a fish. Yeah. GoPro picked it up. Yeah. So. Yeah, and, and even though it's a nice big intake, there still is the the possibility of it, you know, getting pulled up or, or yeah. whatever. And so. But yeah, that's that's all the things that's that we're trying to probably end up doing eventually. Yeah. Nice. We're, we're milking just over 60. Okay, that's not bad. Yeah. Do they go outside at all? Or no, all no, they're all inside. We don't have enough land base to yeah. put them outside and then still have, grow enough crop to True. get them through the winter, right? Yeah. So, what, uh, how many acres have you got here? Then? We got a, just under 100. 97, I think it is. Okay. okay. That's, that's not bad. Yeah. Covered well, everything? <laughs> you covered a lot. You covered an awful lot. Um, you know, so I just... I don't know, have you seen like the feed side of things or are you not into that kind of stuff? Oh, we're into anything that, oh. that is connected with biodiversity and, and environment and, and dairy. Yeah. Um, and if you look at the height of this bunker yeah. versus About 12 feet versus this one here, yeah. you can see the extra feed amount yeah. that you get with the soybean. Yeah. Because we put it in two different bunkers. Okay. So that's straight corn. That's that's straight corn. Okay. And so this is our our feed kitchen. Yeah. So we put in about three flakes of straw. So that's that's just to keep the butter fat yeah. high in the in the milk. And then we got uh, straight alfalfa. We feed another couple flakes of that. Okay. That's for tomorrow. And then we got a wetter new seeding alfalfa. So we actually cut the round bales right in half with a knife to separate them. So we use one half a round bale and then another half of the drier one here. Okay. But yeah, as soon as we open that bunk up, I'm going to test it again and see okay. what the difference in testing is, right? Yep. This, if you look past these piles here, there's so much snow. Beautiful. Right? Yeah, it's, yeah, we love it. It is beautiful out here. 
go ahead and jump in. Come on, Reggie. Come on, Reggie. It's a little warmer in here. Yeah, that's pretty much all I can show you for the tour kind of thing. You know what? That works. Yeah. Um, let's... So if there's any ideas or any suggestions, more than welcome to okay. hear them if you think of anything. I'm. This is my first stop, oh. so I don't have an awful lot, but we're, we're going to share with you guys. For part of the report um, that we're going to write up is going to be a catalog of the different um, programs. Oh, okay. So part of, I think, what the impetus was with dairy farmers was to go coast to coast and to collect up all of the programs. Too bad there's not enough, n no more, like, people that want to be more involved. Like, I was... It's... Like, to have one farm in BC yeah. out of a, I don't know, I think there's 466? I haven't seen the numbers. I think... I saw the numbers. Ontario and Quebec, I saw them a little bit more, but... I think it's, that I think that's what the numbers was when I last looked at the last. That sounds about yeah. right. That sounds about right. It's. It'd be nice know. if farmers would be, maybe show a little bit more interest and yeah. kind of be open to more ideas and. I think it might have helped if we'd been able to come out like to an association meeting or something like uh, that and, and talk about what we're looking for. But is this something that's been going on for a while or is it just No, this is just brand this new. This is just very new. Like oh. this project itself started in the summertime. Oh, see. So, so we're at the very, very yeah. Um, so if you give it a little bit more time maybe and more awareness, yeah. then eventually you're going to get more people on, on yeah. board. And we're hoping to roll it a little bit more. Yeah. You know, get a little bit more of uh <clears throat> Spend a little more time on it and, and develop it a little bit more to, to get not only people who are interested, but maybe some of the people who are a little bit resistant. But now with the Ag Corp, it's more along the environmental. Yeah. And hopefully they, they roll out with more programs to yeah. help. Like we want to do the lighting. We want to upgrade our irrigation intake thing to make it more, you know, better for the yeah. fish or whatever and upgrade our hydrant spacings in the field mainline upgrade we want to do all that but we want to kind of see some funding for that too right <clears throat> really help out is when other people see people starting yeah yeah, you know, yeah. And, and like that's one of the big things is is momentum you get so many farms that the farmers it's the way they've always done it yeah and so, so why should i change yeah well it's word of mouth too right one farmer does it and it's a snowball effect and yeah they talk and hey this really that's works right. and well you're recovering heat yeah you know the cows so are got, generating it yeah it's there anyhow so yeah why, why not, not use it, it? And, and so you can pull it out that heat goes back into the system so you're not paying as much for your hot water and it's not that that much money to put in oh no, and that's one way to get a lot of people thinking about making change is when you talk about what the benefit the and, cost is yeah. but what the benefit is yeah. down the road you know but a lot of times they want to see somebody else do it first yeah and so if somebody else does it first yeah they see it and then yeah. like, okay this year we're gonna actually be doing an experiment with different types of soybeans okay so which one grows the best with the corn sure. so there's, there's a trial within a trial <laughs> yeah yeah and that's what it takes yeah you know and especially if you can demonstrate like you said when you get into that feed and you can say okay now my feed is the protein is increased by this amount yeah because ultimately it's all about the product it's, which is the milk yeah if, if your cost goes down you make a little more money your cost goes up you make a little less the thing is with that is if you make a little more money you're gonna end up spending it anyway yeah. <laughs> you can't help that part but at the same time <laughs> but then i guess you you help the economy that yeah. way right the more it, you spend it, it yeah. generates and it just ripples down right yeah. and at the end of the day that's even if all you can reggie do you must be course. cold buddy you must <laughs> be cold buddy huh you must be cold <laughs> that was fantastic I like yeah that. i like what you're doing yeah you know what are the barriers to farmers doing this stuff oh uh, well, why, it, why do it, they not get involved why do well, they not it's, want it's, to... it's money number one it's money money is is going to be a huge effect there's more to it than money yeah but of course money yeah if you don't if you don't have five thousand dollars you can't spend five thousand no, exactly. dollars it's got to come from somewhere yeah but there are farms that have got the money yeah that don't do these things too yeah. so then you know maybe they're not seeing the benefits not seeing the benefits it maybe it's contrary to what they think good farming is yeah you know that's what i want to find out yeah like that's well, that's i'm gonna work well, on on my 
my doctorate, my thesis is, yeah. is what I'm going to really work on with that. Well, once and, you get something, let me know. Keep in touch. Yeah. Well, I'm interested in that kind of stuff. Okay, cool. I'm interested in the numbers and all that. And yeah, absolutely. Like we will share, this report is going to go out fairly quick. It's not going to be a really heavily um, analyzed report, this first bit. Yeah. Um, but it is. I'm pretty sure you'll come shared. back out in the summertime. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, it's, it's beautiful. Yeah.